sunrise on the Tennessee River. It don't get much better than that, folks. Let's get this party started. Hey y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. I'm back out here on the Tennessee River this morning. Gonna try to hook into some big catfish today. Now where I'm at here is I am anchored down on a ledge. I'm sitting in 32 feet and behind the camera here, it's still a little dark, you may not be able to see, but there's kind of a, a creek that runs up here. Not real deep, not real wide, but it's enough. Some fish may get active, move up in there to feed, and I'm hopefully gonna intercept them as they do that. Plus two, I may be able to intercept some fish that are just kind of working their way up and down this ledge as they move up and down river. So I'm gonna have my bait suspended under the kayak this morning. I'll be using four rods on Carolina rig. I'll have my baits raised up just off the bottom. So 32 feet deep, they'll be sitting down there kind of 29, 30 feet deep. And on my gear today, you'll notice, got me a couple new reels. Got me some new toys that I'm playing with here. These are Daiwa Seagate 35s. I had bought two of those last year for my bank fishing just because you know, the non-level wind, you can get a little bit further cast. The, the level wind don't wear out when you're making those super long casts there from the bank. And uh, I was using those for my bank fishing trips and really like them. So, you know, the last month or so, I started incorporating them into my regular fishing trips. And I like them for that too. So I said, I'm gonna buy me two more. We're just gonna go full set of them here. So these came in the mail yesterday. I got them spooled up. I'm ready to get them slimed today. So I'm gonna get these baits on here. And we'll see if we can make it happen. Now, crap, gotta get my hook out. Poor timing on that to get my hook stuck. <laughs> but uh, for bait today, I've got some skipjack. My friend Clinton hooked me up with some fresh skipjack yesterday. Thank you, Clinton. I'm gonna see if I can catch a big fish on them. But I'm gonna use three rods with the skipjack and one with white bass. So I'm just gonna start out with a little white bass head. Then we'll have big skipjack head on one of them. I'll have a big body section of skipjack. I mean, that's thick, bloody, full of the guts there. They love that. And since I've got that big head piece and the big body section, I'm gonna take just a small section of skipjack and put that out there too, because I wanna have a variety. If I've got multiple types of bait, well, I wanna use them, because you don't know what the fish may be keyed in on day. One day they may really want to skip jack, which is common out here on the Tennessee River. It's it's the king of baits out here. But you'll be surprised. Some days they may be focused in on shad or white bass or whatever. So if you've got multiple options, put them down there. Same thing with the size of bait. One day they may want a large bait. The next day they may want a really small bait. So if you're using multiple rods like I am now, always good to give them a variety just so you have options down there. So I'm gonna get these things baited up We'll drop them down and soak them a few hours and just hopefully, maybe, we hook into a whopper today. There's that first bait, that's the white bass head. Have it off this side of the kayak on the back. Just a small section of skipjack. Send it down. These are my two new reels over here. These are the two I need to get the bad juju off of, get them broke in. So hopefully these are the ones that get hit today. There is the big nasty, big hunk of skipjack going down. Final bait is that big skipjack head. Got it hooked with those must-had demon circle hooks, 10 aught size. People always ask me about my gear. I just, I don't ever talk about it much in the videos because, you know, things just don't change very often with me. I stick with what works for me until it don't anymore. Uh, kind of talk about today since I've added these these two new reels here that I like, but otherwise my gear is kind of kind of the same. I'm somebody I don't collect fishing tackle. I collect fishing memories. I'm out here to catch fish, and these these rods, these reels, these hooks, they're they're just tools for me. That's all they are, nothing more. So, all right, guys, we got our baits out. See what we can do with them. Well, I think we got one on here. Finally. Oh, oh, she's gonna pull now. They got excited. There he goes. Man. Goodness. I didn't think that fish was that big. He took off. I've sat out here a long while, y'all. It's 8.30-ish right now. 
I don't know. Is that fish run back there with my anchor rope? Is that what the issue is? Uh, maybe not. Maybe he's just a better fish. He's pulling drag. I've sat out here this morning for about two hours now with nothing going on. I mean, no ding taps, no nothing. But I just keep putting in the time because, heck, I don't know when fish are going to get active, when they're going to turn on. I know they will at some point, though, and if I'm in the right spot when they come through, I'm going to catch them. But if I'm constantly going spot to spot and I ain't got lines in the water, well, I can't catch nothing. Got to have baits in the water to catch fish. And this right here is going to turn out to be pretty good fish. This one really took me by surprise the way he ate that bait. He's going to end up, I thought he was in my anchor rope and he wasn't, but he has gotten two of my lines. Goodness, man, he's strong. I almost wonder if this ain't a striper. This one might surprise me in this striped bass. Definitely possible up here in this section of the river. I've caught a bunch of them up here. Just don't typically get them while suspended. It happens. It's usually more often when I've got them, my lines cast out. I don't know what this fish is. It could be a striper, could be a blue, could be a flathead. It's going to be a mystery when we get him up here. I like surprises. Good ones, anyway. Oh. No, it is a striper. It is. It's a pretty nice one, too. Yeah. Awesome, man. Let's get him out of these lines and land him. So get y'all there it is he's he's spraying me with uh, you know what there <laughs> nice man not to target species but I'll take them anytime I can get them they are a lot of fun Put him here on the board, get a quick length, and let him go. Yeah, nice, healthy, fat striper, 35 inches. Left me a little surprise here all over the floor of my kayak. That's all right, man. All right, one last look here. Well, let's let him go. You go get even bigger, be even more fun next time. There he goes, man. Off to swim again. <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna get these lines undone here. Get my baits back down there, and who knows, might get another. All right, that striper ate a big section of skipjack. So we're gonna drop another right back down. Oh, oh, here we go, here we go, look at that man. There we go, there we go, buddy. Oh yeah. That's on the small piece of skipjack. Finally gonna break in my new reels here. One of them anyway. I gotta, I gotta tinker with my drag a little bit here. Gotta get it set right. Yeah, man. That rod tip just slowly went over. That's what I wanna see. That's another good fish. I don't know what he is. But he's another good one. Oh yeah, he's spinning me, buddy. He's taking me back up river here. Oh yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> putting the time in, y'all. Just putting the time in. Let me see here. 9.15 right now, so. Two fish here. 
three hours or so but it's worth it the first one was a quality fish and that striped bass and this one's going to be worth it whatever he turns out to be i've said it before in other videos man i'd rather have quality over quantity any day reach up here and get my other camera going that sun was bearing directly into the screen it kept wanting to shut off on me it was cool out here this morning but it is warmed up finally getting some warmer weather here in east tennessee it's may 17th when i'm filming this we've had a cool spring but it's supposed to be like 80 today so we finally we finally warming up This fish is going to warm me up, too. Get him up here, man. He's working me out. That's a good one. Seeing some bubbles coming up here. Still don't know what he is. That is a flathead. A flathead catfish. Not a bad one, either, man. Ate that little piece of skipjack. Woo! That's what I wanted to see. Heck yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Not a bad flathead at all. Get that hook out. And that's what he eat right there, that little body section of, of skipjack. Let's hold him up, man. That's a thick fish. Ain't real long, but he's got some He's got some weight to him. He's heavy for his size. <laughs> got the sun behind the camera. We'll get a decent picture. See all the colors on him. That's just, that's just good luck, man. <laughs> Let's put him on the board here. We'll get a quick length on him and send him home. Y'all, that fish right there, he'll touch 34 and a half inches. Nice, man. Well, let's hold him up here. One final look. The fish that got the juju, got the bad juju off that reel up there. Now I just need to get one on this other one over here. And we'll be in business. All right. Bye-bye, Mr. Flathead. We'll see you around, buddy. And he's out of here. Fun times, man. I'm gonna get me another little piece of skipjack and put on that rod so we can keep the variety platter going. And hopefully, we might get a few more here this morning. I'm a lot more optimistic now. You know, that morning bite this morning as the sun was coming up. Dawn and dusk are always kind of peak feeding times. But this morning just didn't pan out. Um, but as the mornings went on here, got that striped bass and, of course, the flathead. And, and really, for the last couple of weeks that I have fished, I have kind of noticed that bite between the about 9 a.m., 10 a.m., that's kind of been when the fish have been feeding. So maybe it's going to be like that today. Maybe it, maybe the bite's about to pick up. I'm pumped, man. All right, let's try that bait right there. That's another just small section of the skipjack. See what we can catch on it. This rod right here is getting, getting tapped right there. See what happens with it. It ain't acting like a very big fish, I'll tell you that. He's just kind of bouncing around with it though. He ain't swimming off with it. I'm gonna pick up on him. What should be one of them dang old channel cats or something? Y'all know how bad I hate them things. And this is on that small section of bait again, so it, it very well could be one of them old channel cats or dink blue cats, either one. We'll get him up here and find out. We done, we sore lipped him. That is one of them danged old channel cats. I knew it by the way he was acting. Look at that old thing. Them old ugly things. Oh. Bait stealer caught in the act right there, buddy. Old ugly, ugly channel cat. 
I hate these things. People ask me all the time, let's let him go. People ask me all the time, Justin, why do you hate channel cats so bad? Well, that right there is why, because that's about as good as they get here where I fish. Now, I know some of you out there, depending on where you watch, you may only have access to channel cats. And some parts of the country, channel cats get really big. But out here, they're kind of they're kind of low man on a totem pole. Blue cats are the dominant species here, then your flatheads. And so our channel cats, they just don't get very big. And what ends up happening is you get them that size there and smaller, and they get down there and they just they shred your baits all day long. And I can't stand them, man. I want my baits to be left alone. So when that big blue or that big flathead comes along, it's sitting there waiting for them instead of me fiddling with these dang old channel cats. So those of you out there that like them, you can have them. I don't want them. All right, guys, it is time for me to go. You know, today's fishing trip out here, kind of slow, man. Three fish in a little over four hours. I didn't exactly set any records, but the fish I got, I got that nice striped bass. I got that nice flathead. I mean, those are quality fish, and I'm never going to complain about a trip where I get fish like that. So uh, I'm happy with it, but the real treat of the day is just getting out here and watching that sun come up. I mean, that is the... There's just something about that time period, right there at dawn, when everything, the animals, nature, it's all starting to come alive, but yet you still got that calmness, that quiet. It's before you get 8,000 pleasure boaters on the water, before people's mowing their yards, it's just quiet. And it's, it's like it's therapeutic, like a form of meditation or something, and that's, that's the real treat of the day, man. I'm always appreciative and grateful every time I get to experience it. And the fish I get, they're just a, a bonus on top of it. But I want to say thanks again to my buddy Clinton for hooking me up with the bait. He made this trip possible and allowed me to, to get these fish that I got today. So thank you again, Clinton. I really appreciate it, sir. And uh, yeah, guys, that's a wrap on another video. We'll do it again soon. Thanks for watching.